Grace to you and peace, my dear siblings in Christ. I offer you that greeting even as I am feeling a notable lack of peace in my own heart and spirit, a deep sense of unease and frustration and grief at the loss of life in our society. The mass killing in Buffalo in our own state of New York and the mass killing in Uvalde, Texas. And these dramatic examples on top of the regular beat of loss of life in our country as a result of gun violence, domestic violence, law enforcement violence against people in our communities of color. And God forbid that we should ever become used to this loss of life, this mockery in the face of God and God's great gift to us. But it seems to me that a necessary step is to lament to just take some time to grieve and to pour out our hearts before God. And when we have no words ourselves, as many of us are feeling these days, we as people of faith turn to scripture to find the words. And between the prophetic books of Jeremiah and Ezekiel, there's this little book called Lamentations, which seems to be the voice of Jeremiah as he sees his beloved Jerusalem destroyed by the Assyrians and their people put to death. Here are some verses from that book that speak to our current situation. Cry aloud to the Lord, O daughter Zion. The elders of daughter Zion sit on the ground in silence. They have thrown dust on their heads and put on sackcloth. The young girls of Jerusalem have bowed their heads to the ground. My eyes are spent with weeping. My stomach churns. My bile is poured out on the ground because of the destruction of my people, because infants and babes faint in the streets of the city. They cry to their mothers, where is bread and wine, as they faint like the wounded in the streets of the city, as their life is poured out on their mother's bosom. Cry aloud to the Lord, O daughter Zion. Let tears stream down like a torrent, day and night, Give yourself no rest, your eyes no respite. Arise, cry out in the night at the beginning of the watch. Pour out your heart like water before the presence of the Lord. Lift your hands to God for the lives of your children who faint at the head of every street. The young and the old are lying on the ground in the streets. My young men and my young women have fallen by the sword. We know what the book of Lamentation is talking about. We feel that sorrow in our own souls. We find it hard to make sense of this loss of life. Another passage that cries out to us, that speaks for us, is from Psalm 13. You will perhaps recognize it. How long, O Lord, will you forget us forever? How long will you hide your face from us? How long must we bear pain in our souls and have sorrow in our hearts all day long? How long shall our enemies be exalted over us? Consider and answer us, O Lord our God. Give light to our eyes or we will sleep the sleep of death. And our enemies shall say, we have prevailed. Our foes will rejoice because we are shaken. But I trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. Perhaps one of the things you noticed about this psalm is that even though it speaks of wondering where God is in times of lamentation and grief, of violence and destruction, there is that element, as in so many of these psalms, of disorientation, of final trust in God. I'm reminded of Psalm 22, which we hear quoted by Jesus on the cross, where he cries out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But that Psalm 2 ends with a bold declaration of trust in God, a trust that God then turns back to us to be transformative in our society. As Lutheran Christians of this synod, to say we must not allow this situation of violence to occur any longer. We must not cooperate with it. We must not accept it to lament, and then to move to action, to grieve as we must because we feel this pain in our spirit at the loss of precious members of our communities. 
but then to let that grief and God's spirit resolve us to transform this weary world more and more to resemble God's kingdom. As you can see over my shoulder in this video, these are handprints, one of which belongs to my son, Luke, when he was in preschool. Makes me think of the children at the school in Texas. Makes me think of the children of God gunned down in Buffalo because their skin was the wrong color. We dare not make our peace with this, my dear siblings. We dare not. Because then we lose touch with our God. We lose touch with our own humanity. And we lose touch with that precious gift of compassion. So we lament. And then we resolve. I want to end this time with prayers from All Creation Sings and the prayer about mass shootings, which is part of that book because it's part of our lives. But may it and that reality one day be erased. Please join me in a word of prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, your own mother looked on when your life ended in violence. Our hearts are broken with grief and anger at the mass shootings in Buffalo, in Uvalde, Texas. We commend the slain to your wounded hands and their loved ones to your merciful heart, trusting only in the promise that your love is stronger than death and that even now you live and reign forever and ever. God, our healer and our refuge, we pray for all who suffer from gun violence. With your mercy, bind up their wounds, restore their bodies and heal their hearts. Comfort the mourners and embrace the lonely. With your might, empower us to change this broken world. Make us advocates for a stable society, alive with hope in you. We ask this through the one once wounded for our transgressions and now standing with us in our sorrows. God, most mighty, God, most merciful, our sacred stories tell us that you help and save your people. You are the fortress. May there, may there be no more war. You are the harvest. May there be no more hunger. You are the light. May no one die alone or in despair. God most majestic, God most motherly, grant us your life, the life that flows from your Son and the Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.